It's only halfway through the year and I've already hit my annual quota of using the phrases transcendental or out of body experience. I imagine the same rule goes for ethereal and angular. Whatever words I have in the bank don't matter ultimately. At the end of the day, Solop Sisters by Katie Day is beyond any of those that I could use to describe. Same goes for the rest of Day's very transcendent- Oh, there we go, almost used it there, didn't I? Her music is ecstatically pained. It's illuminated by a bright glow and spring-loaded for the next excited outburst like on Unkillable or Fear of the Light, but you can sense from the restraint and the writhing in her voice that there's a lot of pent up pain and trauma. Solop Sisters sounds like the most complete and extensive work of day, smooth sailing but muffled by distress, but each melody that warpedly sings like a VHS tape in reverse simultaneously fogs the album with a sense of nostalgic mystery and pulls it together like the strings in a final symphony. I don't know how to articulate it precisely, but I guess it sounds like how a jellyfish looks. A lot of the music even sounds like it's manoeuvring underwater. A supreme kind of elegance there, but any attempt to get close and in touch with its quintessence will surely hurt with a long lasting agony. Agony, and these aren't the kind of wounds that can be solved with piss either, sadly. The first time that I listened to Solop Sisters, it already tugged downwards on my heart like a child that accidentally let go of a birthday balloon, especially the aquatic ambience of the album that comes into its fullest fruition once dissolving seeps in, almost like you're taking a deep dive through liquid psyche. This album sounds absolutely gorgeous from the get-go, drums crackle like your ears at the end of a flight, synthesizer melodies sway side to side like boys on stormy water, an audio-visual experience that is better described in images than it is in synonym Google results, but Solop Sisters speaks through its message, as of course there is one. If you were willing to listen through the pitch shifting and fragmentation of her voice in the first place, that you would truly understand that this is less a manipulated version of her voice, and instead is Katie Day's voice. Solop Sisters doesn't pull any of those punches regarding experiences with body and gender dysphoria, as she exclaims that her soul sings in octaves higher than her larynx will allow. You realise that whatever tools we have to augment our voice will bring us closer to who we truly are meant to be. I genuinely don't know what my heart is for, and I can't think like I am only this shell, and I'm a storm inside a rotting false construction, are lines that must hit so differently for Day than they do for me, but my goodness do they still hit hard. Given the album's overarching message that we are more than our bodies and linked to its title of solipsism, the self is all that we ever know. If I were to act like an annoying first year philosophy student, that's just randomly defining things to you. Except here it's relevant. If the self is all that we truly know, and we still don't truly know ourselves, then fuck, what do we do? Haunted by past embarrassments and mistakes that hope to disappear like the lines on her face, Katie Day's final words on the album are rounded out by the one thing that she can do to move forward, or rather the two things that she can do, forgiving and forgetting. Verse 2 of Civ identifies her love in the sonic residue of memories, the melting notes from shaky throats thrown over balconies, an amalgamation of letting go and finally mustering up the strength to use your voice to express yourself. When you're alone and sad, there's only one person that you can wrestle with, and that's yourself. Basically this whole album is that, and even the sounds that lap over each other seem to be pushing at each other for room. Two and a half minutes into Shell, the synthesizers are singing for her as if she's lost the capability to speak, which is quite a handy substitute I reckon. It's a very lonely album, but if it didn't spark any electricity in the lava lamp that hangs in my ribcage, then wouldn't I look like an absolute jester? It's born from isolation, but it sparks in me a special kind of affinity, especially if your own experiences are parallel. In the end, I'm all too keen to give it a madly strong 8 out of 10, for that sharp need for compassion that threads every piece of the work together, like a solop shish kebab. 